what is up you guys it's your boy tundra here back with another video and this video i came across is literally because during my live stream i've had some people ask me some tips and tricks on how to play lethal zone in state of the k2 so i decided to make this video for you guys seven ways on how to survive lethal zone in state of the k2 but first run that intro All right, so what's up guys? Now that we're back here, now let's talk about some of these tips and tricks because I'm not gonna lie to you guys, State of Decay on Lethal Zone is a lot easier than you guys think. I think the thing is you guys just make it harder than it needs to be and it's, it's not. So within this video, I'm gonna be telling you guys seven ways on how to survive Lethal Zone in State of Decay. Like, let's be honest, the first easy one is, this is not even a, this is more so me just giving you some advice. Don't drive fast in a vehicle. Like if the vehicle you're driving is fast, you might want to slow down a little bit as bloaters will pop up out of nowhere. Stay away from all special infected jugs, ferals, juggernauts, screamers. Just stay away from these guys and trust me, you'll be fine. Now let's get on to the tips. Now, tip number one, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick the right players to start off with. I cannot tell you how many people do not pay attention to the people that they start off with. Like my lineup from when I'm starting any difficulty, I don't care if it's green, I don't care if it's dread, I don't care if it's nightmare. My start off is I need a medic, not a good medic. The medic has to have good health good stam and at least he has to have four stars already done with his his medicine he has to have at least four stars good health good stam my second one is a mechanic if you're going to be playing on lethal zone you are going to want to have a mechanic in your lineup because of the fact that a mechanic can save your vehicle a lot of time and on lethal zone you have to understand that your vehicle will get damaged a lot faster and a lot easier. Even if you're running, if you run into a pole, a car, anything, your vehicle is taking damage. You might not notice it on green and standard, maybe even dread, you might not notice it, but on nightmare and lethal zone, and to be fair with you, I never played nightmare. Never played nightmare. I went from green, I went to dread, and I went straight to lethal zone. I never played nightmare. So the very first time I hit another vehicle, my car started smoking. This is in lethal zone. Okay, so you might want to get a mechanic. But like I said, this is my lineup. But I'm just trying to give you guys tips on how to pick your right lineup. And the third, let's see, I have computer. The one that um, helps you guys with your command center. You, you might want to also invest in getting that person to help you out with your command center like I do. So that would be mine. Um, medicine, the mechanic, and the person who helps build my command center. But also check out the health in their stam. Make sure it is good before you do that. And I promise you, you guys will be just fine with your start off players. But that is my start off players because I need a mechanic to fix my cars. Always got to have a medic and I got to upgrade my command center. That's my three. Now on to step tip number two. All right. So on tip number two, you guys, what you want to do is you want to pick the right outpost and also the right locations for your outpost. Now, as far as locations, when you're doing locations, you want to have one at the very top of the map, the very bottom the left, the right, and then you can, if you have six outposts, if you know how to get six outposts, I'm gonna tell you that as well. Um, you wanna put those two in the middle of your maps. You don't wanna have your base locations cluttered. Now, how I choose my right outpost is this, right? I want a power source, so I make sure that one of my outposts is power. So I can have free power within my, my base without having to run a generator because it saves so much time and it's less noise. Number two, what I like to have is a water outpost 
because of the fact that a water outpost is just like the power outpost it's it's water going throughout your whole base so you always have an inner supply of water um you want to have a a medical outpost um you want to have a food outpost as well so my top four is power water medits and food i'm sorry those are my main four because when you're playing on lethal zone you got to realize that food consumption is going to be going and you also might want to get you a cook too like once your base is filled and set up guys get you a cook it helps it really really helps all right trust me on that one it, it really does help all right and for your last two it can pretty much be anything i went and got ammo and construction for mine but wait you can actually substitute one of those and i'm actually going to explain to you in one of these tips okay so for one of mine i have the little um the location like the little biotech thing you guys might not know that but in one of those little biotech things what you can do is simply craft scent blocks from that and you get three different options on which you want to use that outpost for what in terms of like bio and all that stuff so when you're playing on lethal zone you might want to have scent block if you don't have scent block you can't craft scent block i recommend going up there to the top of your map the bottom of your map whatever that little bio place is for you to claim as an outpost please go get it and trust me i know you guys probably seen it if you haven't seen it um go back to the early stages of this tip and look and see what i'm talking about you you guys will see what i'm talking about now let's get on to tip number three all right tip number three i'm gonna make it very very easy on how to get six outposts first you want to have an antenna install that into your command center an antenna or what whatever satellite install that but another way is you have a red talent operator who has the hacking ability as you can see right here cloud right here has a hacking ability and that hacking ability will add one extra outpost to your outpost slot and trust me when i say that comes in handy now do a normal player has that ability um to be honest with you guys i don't know um I never scroll through that many because anytime I'm scrolling through with my players to start off, I look for my top three, which is a mechanic, a medic, and you know, computerist, whatever, to upgrade my command center. I don't go scrolling through all these other things. So I called in a red talon. Unfortunately, I ended up getting one. Very thankful for that because at the time I had no idea that a red talon operator who has a hacking ability gives you a six slot. So if you wanna know how to get six, make sure you have an antenna installed into your command center. And on top of that, make sure you have somebody who has a hacking ability. My opinion, I would just say, go ahead and call in a red talent operator to get that for you guys. All right, now let's move on to tip number four. All right, so you guys, what you wanna do with tip number four is use your scent blocks and play cures. Now, if you don't know how to get scent blocks, um, like I said earlier, how to get it is you wanna get that little biochem lab that you can actually claim as an outpost because when you get that, it will give you like three different options that you can choose from on which you want to use with that outpost. Me, I use the first one, which is it lets you craft um, scent block it'll let you craft a little bio jar and stuff like that and then what you can do is at your base is you can craft the plague cures at your base you can't craft the plague cures with the little biochem lab that you can get as an outpost no have a medical outpost have to help bring in more meds you know as time goes by you get more meds that way make sure your chem um, your medical lab at your base is upgraded to tier three. I don't think you need it up there to tier three, but of course you're supposed to have it to tier three. You know, why wouldn't you have it to tier three? And you can craft your play cures that way. And what the scent blocks is gonna do, it's gonna basically mask you from zombies. However, you need to be careful because I did say this in my last video that I did with Screamer. If you mask yourself, 
understand that Screamer and Feral, it works 50-50 on them because if you mask yourself and you are around a Feral, the Feral's going to start running around. He's going to, and I mean, he's going to be running around in circles trying to figure out that basically he's trying to figure out somebody is not a actual you know zombie or infected there's there's somebody you know who's lying and his senses is going off so he's going to constantly run around in a circle instead of standing still and the same thing does go for a screamer if you do use it around a screamer a screamer will walk up to you and there's a 50 50 just like a pharaoh that he's gonna he's gonna scream the pharaoh will attack if the pharaoh figures out that it's you who's trying to mask himself and the screamer will scream if he figures out that it's you that is trying to mask himself so be careful only use the scent blocks when you are trying to do a mission or you're trying to destroy a plague heart or you are just trying to go in and scavenge houses and stuff for supplies and then you can use the plague cure right after that and just wipe it all wipe it all away so that is why you need scent blocks and play cures for that now let's move on to the next tip all right so in this tip guys you what you want to do is you want to have a trader as your leader now the reason why i say that is because no one else is going to tell you this so i'm going to tell you this and i literally discovered this a few days ago right i literally discovered this a few days ago and when I tell you I was super, super grateful for this, super, super grateful for this, because when I was live streaming, right, and I'm just sitting over here, I'm like, damn, like, let me try taking off Warlord, because I always have a Warlord as my leader, and I did do the whole, a medic as your leader, which doesn't really do anything, because I'm going to be honest, if you choose a medic as your leader, it's basically the exact same as building a medic center in your in your base so that's basically all it is you're it's the same thing don't don't put a medic in there and of course when you do a warlord you get guns and stuff i don't know about the sheriff i didn't do the sheriff yet but from the looks of it it looks like you don't really get much of it but the trader the trader as your leader dude it will save your life if you're on lethal zone, all right, and you're running low on supplies, you don't listen to listen to me when I say this, you're running low on supplies, you don't have scent blocks, you don't have play cures, right? And you're running low on certain supplies. You guys can literally call a trader in, call a trader in, and it's going to cause 100 influence. And that trader is going to come to your base. Once you build the trader outpost in your base, the trader will come to your base and you can literally choose from you can choose gas materials parts ammo meds you can choose the whole nine yards on whatever it is that you are low on and you can have this dude come to your base like bro when i was playing on lethal zone i only had a little bit of meds and once i made a trader my leader and i called him to the base and i was like you know what I'm going to call for meds, bro. I ended up with like, I went from like nine to 50 something in my, in my meds category at my base, bro. The, the trader will save your life. Trust me. If you are playing on lethal zone, get a trader and make that trader your leader, bro. And on top of that, I believe you do get a discount when you are buying from these guys but i think you have to do the the missions also to get that and j just trust me guys just just trust me make a trader your leader and you guys will be in a comment saying thank you tundra thank you so much for that tip i appreciate it and i'm gonna tell you guys you're welcome now on to the last tip now this shouldn't even be a tip you guys should already know this but unfortunately you know since some of y'all are new y'all might just be choosing bases just to choose base no you don't do that first of all you want to choose the base that gives you the most options when it comes to building your base you cannot choose a base just because it's smack dab in the middle and it doesn't have as many spots that you need to create and build don't do that 
That's stupid. If there's a base at the top of the map that has everything you need, that has all these spaces for you to create and build up in, you might want to choose the one at the very top. You might want to choose the one at the very bottom. It's all about how much space you're going to need to build in your base and to have things like for me um listen on my brand new guys also join me live on my um live stream on twitch at twitch tv slash the real tundra follow me there on my new build and my new community i have found the perfect base listen to what i found the perfect base actually there's one on trauma valley too where not the base that i'm at right now in this video I'm no longer there. I found the, the right base and that base is smack dab in the middle of the map where you get three large outdoor slots, which you will need when it comes to your leader and you know, you want to do the whole trader thing. But guys, pick a base um, that fits your needs, that has everything that you require, but also you might need it for the game as well. So just because you might require it doesn't mean you need it, but you might want to pick it to help your survivors, to help your community, to help you build. And if you can find one that's in the center of the map, and my advice, go for it. But just make sure you always choosing the right basis so you're not wasting your influence, constantly rebuilding and removing, rebuilding and removing. And that right there, you guys, would be the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to drop a like as I always have a like goal of 10 likes. And I'm close to my subscriber goal of 100 subscribers. So, guys, if we can hit that like goal, hit that subscriber goal, drop a comment down below and let me know if this video helped you guys out in any way, shape, or form. And I will be responding to you guys down in the comment section below. And I will see you all later.